Well, I have to say this project has been a dream for mine for many years. Uh, I used to run an assistive technology lab, and I, I, I love the big red switches and little buddy switches and all those things. What I didn't like about them was the price that came with them. And I always thought that was sort of unfair to a lot of individuals who really needed those switches but just simply couldn't afford them. Uh, and I always wanted to come up with an inexpensive alternative. And I did, if you, if you search my channel, you're going to see something called the dollar switch. And the dollar works, switch works just fine. It costs $1. Um, however, it does have a flaw. You, you, there's a part of it rust on the table as a lever. And if you push on that end of it, it just won't work. And so I wanted to come up with an equivalent switch for the commercial ones. Uh, and this is what I came up with. It's all 3D printed with the exception of the, the cable and parts. And I'll talk about how this whole thing's made now. Um, but I didn't know what to call it. I thought about calling it the $5 switch because that's, I think, less than $5 with the parts. Uh, um, I was suggested the not-for-profit switch. But my wife said, you know, call it the crafty switch, the crafty button switch. And so that, that's, that's what stuck. So let's get into how this is made here. The, um, th these are pictures of them, and what I, which I used for this particular uh, project. In fact, this project was got me started back on this redesigning this um, the switch here. And whatever you print it with, that's the colors you're going to get. This particular one on the screen here, this came up. This is a project I'm working on a local uh, institution that we have a fellow there who actually uh, has a traumatic brain injury, and they wanted him one control of the TV. But we're also going to give them a little bit more of a therapeutic challenge. And so what you can't see here, this if you plug one switch into this box below the remote, every time you hit the button, the channel goes up. Okay, But we want to make that more therapeutic for him. And so what we're doing is two switches there. And there's actually two places to plug both switches in. And when both switches are plugged in, well, he's got to do both hands at the same time to activate the switch. We're trying to incorporate him using that left hand a little bit more. But all the files are necessary for you to print are already on uh, Thingiver Thingiverse there, too. And just look at OT and AT. It's a channel there. And download them and run with them. What else you're going to need here? You're going to need these what's called printed circuit board switches, three of them. They're really cheap. Um, you're going to need three of those things. One cord, which you're going to cut in half to make the, um, the connecting cord for it. And it's got to be, they go by 3.5 millimeter or 1 8 inch mono, they're called. Uh, 12 inches or so of small gauge uh, hookup wire. And this could be multi-stranded or it could be solid wire. Solid wire strips much easier. And in this case, since there's no movement, I, us I usually don't recommend solid wire in case there's any movement because it will break quickly. Um, but in this case, it will be just, uh, just fine. Um, a hot glue gun, wire strippers, a cutter, a solder station, and solder. Uh, skills to solder. You can't just twist these things. You know, you've got to make this repeatable and reliable, which means soldering it. And solder, soldering is just a technique you learn, have to learn. There's lots of help on the web and things looking at, too. And really, it's, it's simple once you realize. You, once you have the fundamentals, it's very simple to do. Um, safety glasses, the cheapest insurance you're ever going to get. Uh, the 3D printed parts um, and some needle nose pliers are uh, optional, but very nice to have. So, once you get the 3D printed part done, this base here, you're going to have four pieces. At least each switch has four pieces. And this piece, this ring here, this is the one you mount the switches on. Um, and now, I, these switches I got from allelectronics.com. These are these uh, printed circuit board switches I talked about. And they're just hot glued on. Now, what I did, I took the little, uh, there's two legs here. I took them off the strip. I cut off this little bit of this little tab on one side, mounting tab. Just, it didn't, it wasn't going to quite fit here. And then it's no big deal, just cut it off. And I just bent the wires out to the side. Now, these are cheap switches. You can usually buy a roll of them. And, uh, yeah, they're very inexpensive. They also come, though, in several different flavors. I used to use this type of printed circuit board switch. And this will work for this project, too. Um, just take these little metal um, tabs in the side, bend them out straight, and I've labeled them A and B. 
because well this when you bend them out straight you re you're gonna realize that this particular strip looks like it goes all the way through because it does and it's how you hook these wires up and really when you're working with a switch that's normally open um, switching technology if you push the button all it does is connect one wire to the other wire in this case you're going to connect the a side to the b side every time the button is pushed it's as simple as that and i've labeled on the uh, ring here just kind of a guide to make things simple and if you're using this switch just do the same thing in a and b in fact this switch might even be simpler because you've got two places in every switch to solder to but uh, either one of these will, will work just fine so you're going to need some a 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter mono plug and mono if you look at the connectors you're going to see two metal connectors where it plugs in that's a mono plug that's what you want what you don't want is the three connectors that'd be stereo and they will not work stereo is like ground channel right and channel left don't use it just a mono um, cut them in half once it's cut in half you're going to strip off just a quarter inch or so of the wire um, no magic number there and once you get it stripped off then you're going to take one wire on each side and solder it to one half of each switch it makes no difference which wire goes where um, either one's perfectly fine it's just one wire on one side and one wire on the other there's the and then you're going to take your hookup wire and you're just going to strip a little bit of that off and wrap it right on top of what you've just soldered okay one on one side one on the other i've used green and white just to make things a little clearer here uh, here's a little bit more of a close-up of it just wrap it on top solder it and uh, this little extra strand you see here that's just a bit of uh, hot glue that kind of squirted out so no big deal uh, you do want to keep wires to the minimum. You don't have a lot of excess wires running all over um, because you will have the cap fitting on top of that. Uh, and when you do hook these wires up, hook them up where these four little posts are because we're going to use that later on as a um, strain release. We're going to put a little bit of hot glue on that just to hold it in place. Uh, so you can strip them, put them right there. Um, continue now with the rest of the wires. And if you follow here, you can see the, what I'm calling A down here. A goes to the A of this switch. A goes to the A of this switch. And then do the same with the B to B to B. And you're done with your soldering. Um, again, if you're using this particular type of switch, do the same thing. Hook the A's to the A's and the B's to the B's. If you'd hooked a wire, like you want green to A, one side of the A, and you hooked the white to the other side of A, that switch is going to be always on just like twisting the wires together you've shorted it out so don't do that once that's done I had this years ago I um, built this tester just to, just to let me know when things are working now if you have a toy you can plug it into just plug it into it uh, and press all the buttons and it should work on any button push if you plug it in and it works all the time without pushing anything you've made a mistake go back and look at your wiring but once it's passed that test um, then it's time to um, hot glue it put it all together and again use a minimum hot glue now you want to kind of try to keep things away from this outer rim right here because that is where this rim of this button resides there's a little space there so you don't have to be so careful but there's a lot of space in the middle here that you don't use and all the wires can be in the middle that's not a problem but use a minimum amount of hot glue and you also want to keep things down kind of low you don't want to have big gobs of hot glue because you want to make sure that when this button the blue plastic here pushes down because it just rests right on top of these red switches here you see um, when it gets pushed it just activates those switches so you want to make sure there's nothing to prevent it from being activated. Once that's done, really you just have to assemble it here. And there's no modifications necessary. These are right off the printer without doing anything. Uh, I've kind of designed it so it's pretty easy to put together. Drop the cap in there. Um, there's the ring you've just made. Drop that in there and thread it together. Now, it is possible to thread this so tight 
that you'll activate the switches. Uh, so, and you should be able to feel a little clicking every time um, you push it. If there's no clicking, you've got it too tight and back it off a little bit. So, you know, once you're done with that, a little hot glue. Um, I always test it at this stage anyway to make sure things are working fine. Get your hot glue back again and wrap the wires around those little pegs in the bottom there. Um, and again, a minimum amount of hot glue just to hold the wires in place. And what might be good too is either use the four uh, holes I had there to mount this to something or just put Velcro on the bottom just to keep you know, little fingers out of, out of the bottom there too. But it's pretty resilient even if you don't do anything to it. So, okay, again, all the files necessary for this switch are, just, are you can found on the OT and AT channel at Thingiverse. Um, and now I have another little bit here coming up. That's going to be more of a teaching moment of what we have done electronically, just to know what these parallel switches versus the serial switches are. So, anyway, if you can make these, make a bunch of them, give them away, run with them. So. Hope this helps. This is a representation of what we've just done. We added the three switches to that one ring in the switch. And this is the notation for a switch, this little open lever here. And why this is called in parallel, because think of these two lines as parallel lines. Well, they are. And it makes no difference which switch is activated because the purpose to control anything is just connect one side, one wire, to the other wire. And we can do that through any switch that's activated. In fact, they all can be activated, makes no difference, or any one of them can be activated for the same result. Now this is exactly how I adapt toys and what I did here in adapting this particular TV remote. Now on the original remote, there is a small button that goes channel up. Now, if you push that ch button, the channel goes up, of course. Of course, that's a fine motor task and to also takes some cognition to run that. However, I have paralleled the button switch, representation of just one switch here, into the bottom. So all we need to do is push that big switch, and that's just like pushing the channel up button on the small channel up button on the remote. Remember, it makes no difference what side is connected. All I need to do is just connect it. I can do it here with the adapted switch or the original switch. Of course, sometimes you hear parallel and sometimes you hear in series. And th these two switches here are in series. They're in line with each other. And the reason why we did this, because we wanted to make, well, we want this individual to use his left arm and his right arm. And if we just gave him one switch, he could activate that one-handed. What we want to encourage bilateral or, or for him to use both hands. So we're adding switch one and switch two. And so to remote, to activate the remote, to raise his channel up, he has to push one switch and the other switch at the same time to complete the circuit to make it work. That's what series is.